There we go. Okay. No. Thank you. It tells us it's recording in process. I'm really excited. Brilliant. Right. Hopefully, um, we should have enough stuff there. So what we've got is the, the the blueprint, which we're going to use as reference, which I've posted in the chat, but it's in um, it's in the Fusion uh, folder in uh, OneDrive, and we're going to go through Fusion 360 pretty much right from the beginning. So we'll go through a little bit of the interfaces. I'm going to use something called direct modeling. Um, which there's two different modes within Fusion. Direct modeling is where we turn the history off. So Fusion can has this thing where it takes a history of everything that you do and it basically it links things like sketches and uh, models all together. I find it overcomplicates things, particularly when you're starting. So we're going to do something called direct modeling, and I'll take you through it when um, as we as we get started. Right, let me share screen and hopefully you'll be able to see what I can see. Share. Okay, can everybody see the Fusion desktop there? Yes. Yeah, great. Great, great stuff. Yep. Okay, so um, on Fusion, um, on the left hand side, can you, can you see um, three menus called Document Setting, Named, Views, and Origins? Yes. yes, you can. Okay, good. I know on sometimes when you're sharing these, some of the options windows don't always share properly. So if I'm talking about something that you can't see, just let me know and then I'll uh, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it. But so what you've got here, where's my, where's my origins disappeared now? Just kill that and don't save. Turn on, there we go. Okay, so. This is the main interface. Um, so a couple of things that I always do to set up. The first one is go to direct modeling. And what the, the menu for that is on document settings. If you right click document settings, so I'm admitting people as you come in. If you right click document settings, right at the bottom, it says do not capture design history. You got that on yours? Um, yep. when, you, when you click that, it, it turns off. Uh, the timeline, the design history. And the reason that I do that is when um, there's, there's two modes and the, the, the default mode of Infusion records everything that you do and you can, you can travel right back in the design and then you can go off on a different fork. Um, it, it adds a layer of complexity and what I found is that it actually doesn't always give you predictable results. Um, it's the, it's, it's, if, you, if you're doing... CAD by the book and you want to learn kind of from um, there's some really good YouTube tutorials, it's, um, it, it is used, but I tend to do direct modeling. And I think for starting off, particularly 3D printing and doing modeling, um, it's, it, makes, it suddenly makes everything easy for people. I found a lot of people struggle with, with Fusion uh, because, of, because that timeline's on. So the first thing I always do is, is turn off the um, capture design history, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, um, the movement around Fusion, so it's the middle button to scroll around the window. And what, what I tend to do is I tend to have my finger always on the shift key. And if you hold the shift key, just turn, I'll turn origins on, which will show us something so you can see a little bit of a plane. So if I, if I press the middle button, move it around, then it allows me to move the object. If I press the shift key, it allows me to rotate the object as I move the mouse with that middle button. So that's just the way we kind of move around a little bit. So what we're going to do in this first session is we're going to have a go at designing the, the gong troll. Oh, I've got a bit of an echo there. Um, and hopefully you've all got that blueprint. So what we're going to do, first of all, is load the blueprint into Fusion. And there's a great little feature. If you click on insert at the top and you click on background canvas, what it lets you do is put a, a uh, exactly as it says really, which is a backdrop or a canvas. And I'm just going to insert, and it's basically a browser for you to select the gonk blueprint and click OK. Oh, hang on a bit, sorry. I did that wrong, didn't I? No, it's not, it's not background canvas, it's canvas, I apologize. So insert canvas and then just browse the file, click on insert. When you do that, 
it'll it'll have the donk blueprint there and you have to select which face you should have these three faces showing if you haven't it's because the origin box isn't ticked at the at this corner here so it and then what you're doing is you're selecting one of the faces you can select you can put that picture on any of the faces on there um what i tend to do is just click on the little square that you've got on the top little thing you've got on top so i'm looking at it straight from the front and i'm going to click it on the front face when you do that it appears and what you can then do is you can scale and resize it to, to however you want and this is going to be a reference picture so we're just going to use this picture then as to to get um an idea of scale size etc so at this stage just drag it in get it to a size where you can see it click ok don't worry about the scales or anything um, and that should give you then the background image to work off. Anybody got stuck on that or are we all okay? Yeah, my fusion for P60 died on me. So <laughs> oh, yeah, we're just waiting for <laughs> us to just catch up here real quick. I had a Bluetooth headphone is issue for a sec there. No problem. No problem. Tiffany's trying to catch up too. But yeah, so I'll just I'll just talk through the, the interface while while you're doing that. But it but effectively. We went through insert, canvas. Canvas. Canvas is a background, um, a reference, and then you, you, you drop it on one of those faces and gives you this picture as a reference. Now, what that's also done, the left-hand side under your browser, where you just had origins, you've now got another folder called canvases. And if you open them, that canvas in there, you'll see your gone blueprint. So any objects, any sketches, anything that you create with Infusion will appear in this browser so you can do things with it. Now, what I'm, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to look at scaling this to the right scale. I don't know if you can see the image, but there's two things wrong. First of all, it's, it's flipped, so it's reversed. And also, I don't know what scale this is going to be. So the, uh, the next thing I want to do is... is um, scale it correctly. So to scale it correctly, uh, if I right click on that canvas, I can go back in and edit the canvas. And this will bring me an edit, edit canvas box up. Within the edit canvas box, that's where I can flip it horizontally or vertically. So I'll just, I'll just flip it horizontally so that it fixes it, which hopefully you can see now. And I'll click OK. So now it's the right way. Now, the next thing is then scaling this to whatever scale you want to. Um, I'm, I'm the, the gunk that I'm going to design, I'm going to do for the sideshow, the one six scale models. Um, so I've already measured C3PO and he's 30 centimeters. So I know how big C3PO is. And so if I right click on that blueprint, there's another option underneath there called calibrate. What Calibrate does is it allows you to very quickly make the image the right size. So if I click on Calibrate, and I can, I can move it around by that middle button. And if I use my mouse wheel, I can zoom in. So I'm going to Calibrate from the top of C3PO's head. I'm just going to press a button there. It'll put a little dot at the top of his head. I'm going to go right down to his feet, somewhere on his feet. It's not going to be exact. I'm going to click on that. Now, when you do that, it actually measures the distance between those two points, which is 107 millimetres at the moment. The sideshow model that I've got is 300 millimetres, so I'm just going to type 300 millimetres in there and press return. And what it then does is it scales that to the appropriate size. Very, very, very useful if you're working off reference pictures uh, because you can get, if you've got blueprints um, or you've got images and you want to get them right scale and you've got something that you that you know the scale of, you can very quickly do that scaling. So, um, meters, millimeters, millimeters, Sorry. yeah, 300, 300 millimeters. Mil okay, thank you. If you do 300 meters, uh, Christine, you're going to end up with a really big gunk, a really big one. Mike, where did you hit the cal get the calibrate from? So on your browser, you've got canvas. If you extend the canvas, you've got the gong blueprint. If you right click on there, there's you've got oh, just under edit cam, but you've got calibrate. Okay, let me do that real quick here. 
if I'm that. I'm not getting the option. I'm, if I right click on the Gonk blueprint, I am not getting the option to calibrate. I'm not getting any menu up whatsoever. So I don't know if there's something that I've not done. Is that uh, is that in, is that in your browser, uh, Doug? In the, uh, in the browser with Infusion? Yes. Um, so when you when you click insert, did you insert as a canvas or a background canvas? It's it's in as a canvas. Yeah. So when you right click on it, what options come open? Uh, well, on the actual Gonk blueprint, on that way where your mouse is now, if I click on that, I get nothing, literally nothing. Uh, I wonder if, if I need to, because I'm on a Mac, so I'm just trying to see if there's another button. No, there's nothing, no button I press will bring up a menu for that. So I'm but. using it on the Mac version, and I do have that, so it shouldn't be a Mac PC thing, though the lack of a middle mouse button is throwing me. <laughs> Okay. Try, yeah, yeah. Try control um, click on hang, the Mac. Hang on, I've, I've got it. It's all good. I've, I figured it out. It's all good. Kind of okay. Break. Sorry, I'm, I'm not. I'm not used it on Mac, so I don't know what the <laughs> the different key presses are. It's all good. It's all good. So sorry. What was after calibrate? So yeah. So if you're right, if you if you go into calibrate, um, what you can then do is zoom into the picture, select the top of C3PO's head, um, and as a as a point, and then the bottom of C3PO's head. What it'll actually do is it'll measure C3PO. It'll pull a little menu in there, and then you can type in there 300 millimeters, and that'll get it. That mean that the the image within Fusion is exactly the right size then for the sideshow ones. But if you want, obviously, if you wanted to do um, one for the Black Series, you just measure a Black Series figure and do those in the same sort of process. Okay, got that. Excellent. Right. So we should be, we should all be roughly at this position where we've got a blueprint in um, and we know that the blueprint is correctly scaled. So we're going to start modeling now. Um, we, there's, there's, there's all objects within Fusion 360 start with a sketch. So, um, and I tend to use shortcuts, but on the top section near, near where you've got design, the first button is create sketch. So if you click on create sketch, when you move your mouse then into the uh, main modeling space, you'll see it'll highlight all the different planes. So it's, it's kind of trying to highlight all X, Y, and Z plane. So I'm clicking on that front face one. So this is the same plane as what the, um, the sketch is. And when you click on it, you should see, um, you should then see uh, a grid come up. So you're actually sketching then on that place. If it whizzes around and the um, sketch disappears, you may well have selected the wrong plane. So you, you, your view, which is in the top right-hand corner, I should say front. So you're now, you're now in sketch mode and you don't need to do this, but I'll just quickly show you what sketch mode is. So sketch mode allows you to create lines, so you can draw lines for blueprints, things like that. Um, it lets you create squares. So there's a whole bunch of menus um, that change that, that, that change at the top when you're in sketch mode. So, and what what you um, what sketch mode is is it's a first stage really of creating a solid object. So what you tend to do is you'll draw around something, and then from that you can start to create objects of that shape. So we will start, let's start modeling. So what we're going to do first of all is probably do the, the top of this gunk drive. So I'm going to, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to grab a line. I tend to zoom in and pick a, a rough kind of gray area of the middle of where I think it is. And then I zoom out and I just use the middle mouse to, uh, to kind of um, move around the space. And I'm, all I want to do is get a, a line from that bottom corner that's at the right angle that goes up at the top. I'm not bothered about the fact that it goes past the edge. I'll try and follow it exact. I'm just gonna put that line in there. So that's my first line. Um, my next line I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna then select this corner here. And all I'm really doing is sketching out the the uh, the, the, the top of that gong, just, just following it like um, uh, just a, there we go. It's like a like he's tracing almost. So I've drawn I've drawn two lines, one up, one across. 
the reason I've, I've started this line here at the moment, I'm not going to draw this rounded corner. I'm going to keep the corners straight. And I'll show you why. What I'm going to use is, is a function when we get onto the modeling of the solid body to add that, that, that corners on. So I'm just going to make a sharp cornered um, model for that for that top piece of the gong. And then we'll work out how we um, how we add all the, the features in afterwards. This, that, think if you think of direct modeling, it's a bit like um, it's a bit like woodwork. You start off with a block of wood and then you chop bits off. So uh, as we get into it, you'll you'll understand it a little bit more. So I've drawn that first piece. I'm going to then draw a second line, which is from again when you hover on that point, it'll lock onto whichever point. So I'm now going to do the baseline of that top part of the gonk right across to somewhere in the middle of there. I'm gonna click that and then I'm gonna click up a tick box to put that line in. So I've now got three lines. I've got this line, I've got this line, and I've got this line. And I've joined them with a, with a four hole. Okay, I'm gonna go back into the line tool. And this time, what I wanna do is draw a line that, that goes right down the center of this. Because rather than me sketch out something that um, looks like it's actually uh, a perfect mirror, I'm going to use a function that lets me make it a perfect mirror. So if you move your pointer when you're in line mode, you'll see it as you get close to a line or a point, it locks on. If you then hover it along that line, run it along that line, the, the, the cursor will change and it'll lock when you get to the center of the line. So it almost locks into what it knows is it the exact center. I'm gonna, once it's locked in, I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna draw a line which is exactly at 90 degrees going up. So what what we've done there then is I've, I've, dri I've driven, I've drawn one side of the uh, shape of the gonkroid and now I've drawn a line which allows me to then use it as a point of reference to create a mirror. So to create a mirror, I'm going to click on create and rather than use a line function, if I scroll down there, there's a function called mirror. So I click on mirror. I can then click on this outer line. And then it's asking me then for a mirror line, which is the line that it's going to use as a point of reference. So if I use the center mirror line and click OK, what it does do then is it gives me a perfect mirror um, of that other line which means I've now kind of traced out a square part of that top gong droid. Right, I'm going to stop there now. So has anybody got stuck? Questions? We're all okay? Tech silence is good. Yeah, we're going to have to go back and like follow along the video <laughs> from the recording. <laughs> Tiff and okay. I, Tiffany and I both got lost here. <clears throat> Question for you, Michael. How do you make sure that you're in the center for your mirror line? Um, when you're... Okay, so any line, I'll just draw a quick line here. Once you, you, once you draw a line, which you can see, hopefully, on the screen, if I go back into line mode, you can see now it's asking where you want to put the first point. When you get mm -hmm. close to the line, it, it, it uh, snaps to that line. And then if you move it along, it'll snap to a center to the center point. So it finds a center point for you. Once it's okay. snapped to the center point, you can click and then you can draw a center center line like that. Thank you. Mike, did that triangle denote the center line? Yes. Yeah. Ah, cool. So, Thank you. So in that in 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 that line that I've just drawn there, you can use it with any line. So I can do another line which is off the off the center of there. So it does automatically. Uh, find the centers. I'm having an issue getting it to select the line. You have an issue to what? Sorry. It wants me to select an object and then a line. So let me click OK to select the line. So in, in what, what you, you once you're in sketch mode, you've got you have this little window called sketch palette, which you know if you can hopefully you can see. Yeah. Um, and then if you click on create and line, that's where it should then let you start to draw lines. I think the question is, so 
because I'm having the same thing. So when you're mirroring, yeah, it, it asks you for the object first and then the mirror line second. I'm yeah. not able to actually select the object, which is that area that we wanted to mirror. Right. Are, are you you're in sketch mode? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh wait. So you've, you've got to be in sketch mode first of all. Um, so you click on the create and you create mirror, mm -hmm. and then that will give you two menus. One, the top one says objects, and the the bottom one says mirror line. Is that is that what it says? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, with the object, you're saying that you can't actually select any of the lines that you've drawn. I can select the lines individually. Is that what you wanted us to do? Yeah. So you select, okay. you select, you select one line individually. What I'm doing is I'm mirroring this, this side, this angled line, just the one line, not all of it. And then I click on mirror select, and I'm selecting that middle line. So it's, it's only oh. going to create a mirror of that one line. So one of the things that I noticed is when you're drawing your horizontal lines, you have the one near the center seam of the gong that is yeah. to a precise end point. For your top line, if you don't extend out over the edge, when you do your mirror, if the mirror line doesn't intersect with the top line, you don't get a closed object on the right side. You just get an Correct. open path. So yeah. maybe that might be throwing people. I, I had to redo mine a couple of times before I caught that. It's my top yeah, line was too short. <laughs> yes, it's, yeah. So, so you're always ultimately to create an object or to create a, um, a, a solid object. We, we've got to have a continuous perimeter all around the outside, and you can get that continuous perimeter by closing the loop like that, or you can get the uh, continuous perimeter by intersecting, um, kind of like like that. Yeah, and mine looked like it was closed until I zoomed in closer and saw that it was ever so slightly too short because I was being too picky. And so the next yeah. time I just drew it way over the edge. Okay, so if th this happens to me quite well, I say quite a bit, but this happens to me. So you'll do something like that and it looked like it's closed. And I'm thinking, where the hell is it broken? And the way I tend to do it then is if you, you can literally draw a line connecting two ends and you, you, then it allows you to ah. go, oh, it must be on that side. Okay, so if I draw a line there, oh, it must be on that side. So it allows me to narrow in, and then I can zoom in and go, oh, it's there. And then, then I just delete them to the two lines that, that kind of uh, that I've done to intersect. Okay. Are we all okay? Yeah. Good. Brilliant, oh, yeah. okay. <clears throat> So the, the next thing we'll do is we'll go back into line mode and you, you've done this already. So all I'm really going to do is draw, start to draw around the rest of the, 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 the top body of the gonk. So literally I can just click into point, click into point. You'll see um, it does lots of snapping. So what I want to make sure is that this, the bottom part of this is level. So as I move in, it will snap. If it doesn't snap, you can kind of train it to snap by hovering onto there and going, it's there. And then it goes, okay, I understand that. I know where to snap now. So snap to that. And then I'm going to go down to here um, and snap to that. Now, there's lots of ways you can you can get the accuracy of this. I mean, you can actually go in and um, type in particular metrics if you wanted to. It allows you to type the data in there. I'm just, I'm just using it straight off the blueprint. Now, if I zoom out, I can see there's a, there's a back plate on the gonk there. So I want the body to, to come into this second line, which actually, again, snaps with that top piece. So I'll touch that top place there, and it will allow me then to, to snap to where that is, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw it. And again, because I'm going to intersect lines i just want to get the angle right for this bottom part of the body so i'm going to overdraw it to about there i'm going to hit escape which takes me out of the line sketch piece and then i can draw this bottom the bottom part as well so similar to what i did at the top i'm going to draw a line from there right across I'm not bothering about overshooting and then i'm going to go back and just 
close that loop like that. Um, and then what I will do is I'll continue. I can, well, I can continue that mirror line down here. So I'm actually going to mirror this again, or I can just mirror straight off that line. So what I'll do, as I said, lots of options on this, but I'll just, my, my approach will be I click, create, mirror, and then what it'll do is it'll let me select some objects. So this time I'm going to select quite a few of these lines. So I want to mirror that detail around there. And then I want to mirror that line. So, I've, so if you can see, I mirrored the, the little bit around the uh, center detail right down to the bottom. And then I'll click on the mirror line. I'm going to use the same mirror line that I used last time. I'm going to click OK. And that's now giving me the bottom part of the gun that's the same size. So now that's as you awesome. hover your mouse over, you should be able to select these three areas as, as continuous loops. Sorry, there was a question. No. Okay. Any any questions on that? We've it's we're effectively repeating the same thing, so we're just drawing lines to, to get this overall um, shape. All good. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so that's given us the top part of the. Or, or how the did whole you that? Hey, Michael, how did you mirror that bottom again? Did you extend that mirror line, or did you just select that as the? I just selected the mirror line. Okay. Yeah. So it's the. It's just giving us a, um, a kind of a horizontal mirror, so you can use that mirror line if it's the same one. You could extend it if you wanted to, it wouldn't be gaining much. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create solid objects out of them, out of what we've done. So I'm gonna hit the finish sketch button, which takes us back out of sketch mode, um, but the sketch is still there. If you look on your browser, um, you've now got Origins, which is the um, one that shows the planes in the center. You've got Canvases, which is the blueprint of the gong. You've got a new one now called Sketches. And if you open that, you'll see Sketch 1, which is the first sketch that you've got. What you can do um, in the browser is you can start to name these and you can order these. So it's a bit like a folder set within a within a standard PC if you wanted to start to organize what you would do. I tend to delete sketches that go along, which is the direct modeling method that I use. Um, if you were doing uh, ones with the timeline on, you'd actually have all the sketches because effectively they would be the blueprints of the, what you're creating. But with um, direct modeling, the sketches are only needed to the point when you create the solid object and you can delete the sketch and you can create new sketches. And that will be, become more apparent as we get a little bit further into this. So the next thing we're going to do now, this is still in flat space. We're going to start creating 3D stuff. So I'm going to highlight these areas. I'm going to press the shift key, which lets me highlight multiple areas. And then I'm going to just, once I've got that piece, I'm going to click on create and extrude, and extrude is the very basic function that lets you then drag this out to create a 3D object. So now this is giving me that shape that we've just designed in, in sort of full 3D space. I'm sorry, sorry. Mike, I missed where extrude was. That's under create, extrude at the top once you've exited the sketch mode. Okay. So I won't worry about it too much. Pull it out however far you want to, because we're going to, it's a bit like wood, so we're going to chop pieces off this in a second. I'm going to click OK. Um, and now what you've got is you've got a very wide and very flat version of that gonk. So it's it's the shape that you want um, on one on one angle. Okay, and that's your first body. So again, if you look on your um, browser under body, you've got your first body there. Now I I can then rename that to call the gonk main 
body or whatever you want to call it. Body like that. So that's your that's your now there's a there's a feature in fusion that once you've used the sketch, so you've extruded from it, it will automatically hide that sketch. It doesn't delete it, but if you if you go into your sketch folder, you'll see the little eye icon is now grayed out. If you want to pull that sketch back, you can press that button again and the sketch will reappear. So you can you can see the sketch there now. By default, it hides it once you've done the first extru extrusion. So just be aware of that. You know, if you do think you've lost a, a sketch, you you haven't done. How much did you extrude that? Um, I don't know. Let me have a look. Uh, Two hundred and twenty-six millimeters. I extruded it. Well, you can pull it. You can pull it to any length because we're going to cut it short, the marine. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. Now we've got that side. So. Can I ask a quick question? Sorry. Michael, can you just repeat the extrude again? I'm not get. I'm not. It's not working for me. <laughs> What's that? Sorry, the extrude. Yeah, yeah. If you could just show me how to do the extrude again. Yeah. So um, let me just pull it back a bit. So what what you do? There we go. So you've got your sketch. You're out of you're, you're out of sketch mode. So at the top it. Yep. Um, it should say design and you should have these these icons um, and then you should be able to highlight these areas so if you can I stop you real quick because that's that's the hang up I'm having is that because yeah. I didn't close it somehow okay it just is any of those areas the far right one highlights or gets darker there but the other two not yeah no, so that, then those are open they're open yeah is that what it is okay uh, so you, you you'll have a you'll have a little gap somewhere, and where I said you can draw lines across to find out where your gap is, you can use that sort of method. So you highlight all three of them with the shift button held, and it should turn blue. Then you click on create, yeah. you click on extrude, and that then gives you a little arrow which you can see there. So you can drag that arrow out to extrude the solid object. Or you can type in a number. Like I said, it was 226 last time, but so it doesn't matter. I'm just pulling it out to any sort of distance. Click OK. And that's your solid object. Did that work this time? Yeah, got it. Brilliant. OK. Cool. Okay. And so, you know, we're going to repeat a lot of these ways as we, as we go through because it's just a repetitive thing. So it's just getting your head around the first bits. OK. And, and, and there's hundreds of ways of doing the same thing. So I'm just going to take you how I would model this one as I get started. And then uh, we, can, we can play with some of the other uh, different ways. So the next thing I want to do is, is, is get the front shape correct. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm just going to move the block now. So I've got this body. I'm going to look at it from the top. So I've got, I've got the, the top um, thing showing. And I'm going to click up, right click on the body and I'm going to select move, move copy, which is the top menu. Now, within this, I, I can then move this thing around. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees like that. Um, and the reason I'm doing this I'm, is um, what I'm trying to do is get it so that I can then cut that second piece out, which is how it looks from the front. And I know from the if I if I do look at it this way now, you can see what I've done now is I've moved it to a different orientation. So I'm going to drag that and just move it so that it's covering the front of the gunk. And I'm going to click OK. Hey, Michael. So, yep. Um, this is John. How do you, so if your whole screen is off center, how do you get it to center back up again? Does that make sense? You yeah, so... In the in the top right hand corner where you've got your little house, yep. um, and your three. If you hit the house button, that'll take you back to the default view. Gotcha. And then if you click on the front face, you can then get it back to the front face. All right. Yep. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So what what I've done there is I've took that body that we've done. I've rotated it ninety degrees and I've moved it in front of this uh, blueprint again. 
what what I could have done is I could have put another blueprint on a different um, plane. So I could just take that, take a copy of that blueprint and put it on another, another plane. I've just chose to move the body. It's all different ways of doing these things. So now, now what I want to do now is is effectively cut um, cut this body to to around here. So again, if you imagine it like a block of wood, what I want to try and do is cut this shape out. So the first thing I'm going to do is start to draw another um, uh, sketch around the outside of that bunk. To make that easier, um, I can actually hide this body. So I can click on the little eye icon so it's not, it's not in the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into sketch mode and I'm going to select that same face again. So I'm now starting another sketch. So this, this time, I'm going to drop into line. And I'm going to draw, to get the center, what I'll do is I'll draw a line from that corner right the way along to this corner, make sure that that's at zero degrees. So that'll give me the width of this, uh, of this, this particular uh, angle. And then similar to what we did before, first thing we want to do is draw a center line. So I'm going to move it till it locks into the center of that line. I'm going to push it up. Always check the angles, 90 degree angle, and it's going straight up. And I'm going to click like that. I'm going to tick that. And then that gives me, again, it gives me a nice mirror line. So it means I'm not having to draw both sides. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from the center here out, go way past, because I'm not worried about that at the moment. Um, I'm then going to draw from this piece here up to there. And I'm going to, again, going to cross it over like that and take that. Um, and then I'm going to do what we did before, which is just kind of trace around the outside of this gong. There we go to there. Bring it into there. So I'm just going to sketch around again, just lock it into there so I know the same distance down to the bottom. So this is literally just like tracing this, this blueprint right down. And I'll go way past the end again, like that. And then what I will all then do is similar to what I did before. Um, To be fair, you, we don't actually need to put a bottom on this, but I'll, uh, I'll show you why in a sec. So I'll draw a line across the bottom. Draw that line to there. So when I've got that, we'll do exactly what we did before, which is create mirror. Um, and then I'm going to mirror this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, this line. This line, this line, this line. In fact, actually, to keep it neat, I'm gonna. I'll show you why, but I'm just gonna select that 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 middle line. I'm gonna click that center line as a mirror. Click OK. Now, if I just hide the canvas so you can see what I've, what I've sketched, I've got the the two outer shapes now, um, and. I'm going to delete this middle line. I'll tell you why in a second. And then what I'm going to do is go back into line mode and just connect these up. The reason being is I'm going to use this as a way of cutting the gonk. Um, so I whiz through. Go. So what I've got now is I've got th these two outer edges, which are giving me that, that outer profile uh, that I need. So if I bring back the body, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna show you what I'll do, and then what I'll do is I'll circle back. So I know I've gone quite quickly on that particular one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this body, and I want to use these lines to cut it. So when I've just had the canvas, there we go. So what I've been the, the most important part is to get these these lines, which are which is effectively the knife lines for the cut. And the same on that side. So um, 
in reality, the, the top lines and the bottom lines are not needed. And also, it, because these are going to be used as cut lines, we don't, they don't need to be a continuous perimeter. And I'll show you, show you what I mean by that. So I've just cleaned it up a little bit. So what, what I'm left with is a, a single sketch line like that. And I can tell it's a single sketch line by double-clicking on it, and it'll turn blue right across. So there, there, and then, um, and I've deleted all the other ones. So if I bring back the body, we've then got the body that's in there. Okay. If I hit finish sketch now, I'll bring the canvas back, hit finish sketch. I'm going to click modify and split body. And what split body does is it allows us to do effectively cuts. Like I said to you before, a bit like wood where you chop pieces of wood off. I can now highlight that body. Um, the splitting tool that I'm going to use, so you click on the splitting tool, is one of those lines. I'll click on that line. Now, I could click on the other line and do both cuts at once, but I'll just do one cut, simple. Um, when I've done that, as I said previously, the sketch actually disappears. So you, you have to click on the little eye to bring the sketch back. I'm going to click on Modify, Split Body, and then I'm going to highlight that second part of the body. And I'm going to do that line and click OK. Now, what, what that's done is it's taken the, the two lines that I've done and it's cut that uh, thing a bit like wood, really. So what I'm left with now is three bodies the two edges that I've cut off and the middle one. So if I hide those two edges, what you can see we've got now is we've actually got the, the gonk basic shell. Now I know that what, what I've actually done here is um, because I, I didn't get the lines perfectly lined up, you can see what's happened on the corners. This is because I've hand drawn the edges um, and you can see that they're slightly out uh, just on the corners there. So we can fix those. Um, but I just wanted to take you through that process of actually taking the, the two sides, which is doing that first cut, rotating 90 degrees, and then doing the second cut. Right, I'm going to stop there. Any questions? I know we'll whiz through that quite quickly. Hey, Michael, I have a question for you. Um, yeah, go for it. So uh, you removed the center line because you want you want to cut the whole body out. You didn't want to split down the center. Is that right? <clears throat> That's right. Yeah, I didn't I didn't need the center line really. Yeah. So I, I just tidied the sketch if I could. As long as as long as these two here aren't connected, the two lines either side are connected. It's not too much of an issue. I could have left the center line down there. Mm -hmm. okay. Good, thanks. Yeah. Okay. No other questions? Michael, uh, I, I just, um, I had the, the, the main body and I've hidden hidden that, but um, when I go to set my lines again, I seem to not have my line icons up in the corner again. So, you know, up underneath the word solid, it's not the line tool. It's, it's uh, that one that you're seeing now on your screen. So how do you get back to the line tool? Because I just couldn't. Um, you've got that create sketch at the top left. Yeah. So you click on that. Yeah. And then you click on this this front page. Click anywhere in there. Ah. Yeah, anywhere in that little little box there. Right. And then that takes okay. back to that sketch was confusing. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm with you. Cool. So Excellent. so Mike, once you've drawn out the second profile, yep. can you can you explain one more time? how you use that to cut the other profile or did you just, cause I didn't yep. quite see that. Yep, so 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 effectively what I did, um, if I just zoom back out to there, is that we modeled this from this first profile on the left. Once we right. modeled it, we rotated it 90 degrees and then we put it in front of that second profile so we've moved the body that we've modelled, so it sits in front of there. If you think of it like cutting wood, it's now ready to cut. Yeah. Yep. Then, then what we did then is we drew um, 
two two lines around the edges of where we wanted to cut this second part. Now the way the way fusion works is if it's got any any line can be used as a knife tool almost. And if it's if it's a continuous sketch, if it's continuous line, i.e., it's got you know a few bumps and lumps and bends in it, it'll allow you to use that as a single single knife to cut through this like wood. Similarly on that side. So I've now got two. I just hide the uh, canvas. It might make it a little bit easier. I've now got those two sketches drawn. Um, okay. Which, so you don't have to connect them at the top and the bottom. You just need the two sides. Yeah. So that, that's the difference. If we were extruding like we did before, we need it to be a continuous loop to be able to select the middle of that and extrude it. When we're using these as cuts, then we, we just need the, the drawing there. And then what you do is modify split body. And what that allows you to do is highlight the body and then it'll ask you for the splitting tool. The splitting tool is basically the lines. So if I click on that line, and if you can see now is it is it's drawn that red split. If you you just make sure that the extend splitting tool is ticked, it's generally ticked by default. And then when I click OK, it does that cut. So if I look on the body browser now, I've actually got two bodies, body one, body two. If I highlight but hide body two, then I've got that first cut in that body. And then if I bring the sketch back, I can do exactly the same again, which is modify split body, highlight the body, click on the splitting tool and select the other one and click OK. And then that's what that's done is it's now cut the other side off. What I'm left with then is a basic gonk shape. How can we look at our original shape that we had before we made the cuts so that we can make sure that the lines that we're drawing for those those yeah. those center lid parts yeah. are, are lined up? That's right, yeah. So I, I've, and, and this would say, I'm, I'm, I'm modeling this live and, and kind of as I go through, so I will make cock-ups in it also. That lets you, lets you see how you get out of that, which is quite useful. So you, you're absolutely right. What we've got there is we've got a um, we've got these which aren't aren't lined up. So there's the, the way to fix that. If we and I'll just just use the back button. It's an interesting thing as well as when you turn the history off, you still got the the undo and the um, repeat. So it doesn't you don't kind of lose that. So where I, where I've drawn these lines here, I just hide I'll hide the body, um, and I'll also hide the canvas. So where I've drawn these lines here, they need to line up with the other one. I've got the previous sketch. I can turn that sketch on. So now I've got both sketches showing. And what should happen is these two should line up, but they don't. So I'll show you how I'll, how I'll quickly correct that now. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go back into sketch two. So if I clicked on the create sketch button, and this time I highlight sketch two, it'll let me go back in and re-edit the um, sketch that's there, which is this one we're looking at. So actually, no, it won't. Uh, just delete that. It's crazy. That's creating a new sketch. Now, if you if you go on to if you press the L button, which is create line, um, it lets you go in and edit sketch two. So I'll click on sketch two. So now I'm actually in sketch two. If I draw from that corner there across, I can see that that one lines up. Um, and if I draw from that bottom one across, I can see that that one doesn't line up. So I know that this middle detail here is out of alignment, so I've got to re redraw that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just delete that detail. Go. Well, I'm going to re redraw it so that, oops, not all the deep. There we go. Okay. I'll bring back the canvas. So I'm going to redraw that detail, but I want it to line up with this, this existing sketch. So like before, you can actually use the use other sketches as points of reference, um, but sketches appear in each of their own canvas. So if I move on to this sketch, uh, let me just hide the canvas. If I move on to this sketch here, which is the first sketch that we did, it won't let me hover or it won't um, 
um, jump to any of the points. And the reason being is that that's a different sketch. So this is the active sketch, but I can just see this one. What I can do is I can pull aspects of this sketch into this sketch uh, by using something called project. So if I click on the create button, I've got project include, and I'm going to click project. What project lets me do is it lets me take either any point from an object or any point from another sketch and bring it into this sketch. So if I, if I zoom into this, I can click on that, 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 and that, which are the four reference points, click OK. And what it's actually done, if I hide the other sketch, which is sketch one, it's now brought those four points into this sketch. And they're the points that we need as a reference to make sure that this is accurate. So if I draw that across, you can see now, um, by luck or good judgment, I've got the top one correct. And I could actually just draw these straight across as reference lines. So I know that they are now perfectly aligned with the uh, with both the object and the um, and the previous sketch. So if I bring back my canvas now, what I can do is redraw using those from there to there. So I'll resketch around it, but this time what I'm doing is I'm I'm using those guidelines as to making sure that they're actually hitting the the right points so from there to there from there to I'll lock into there from there down to there and i'm still drawing the parts that go along those lines so i'm actually going to delete those lines very shortly so let's see we'll draw that to so before I do that, what we'll do is I'm going to extend this one out. Again, it, extending this line, it snaps to the line's angle. So I'll do that like that. And then I want to draw that one to there. Once I've done that, now I can delete these guidelines that I've put in. Two, three. Michael, could you show again how you project from one sketch to the other? Yep, sure. So... Um, Make sure you can see the other sketch. So you've, mm -hmm. got the, you've got both of them lit. If you click on, and you, you're in the sketch that you want to project to, you click on okay. create, project include project. Project. And then that'll right, give thank you, you. Where, where you want to select. So you can select, you can select lines, dots, anything you want. Project tool is incredibly useful. The other way that I could have done that is I could have actually just projected straight from the body as well. So that I can click on create, project, project, and I can click on points and lines actually straight off the body, which is, which is very, very useful. And the, you've got two types of projects. You've got one which allows you to project individual edges, individual points, individual lines. And then you've got a, what's called a bodies project where it will actually project the outline of the whole body. Um, so what I could have done is I could have, I could have just projected the, these lines straight off the body rather than off the sketch. There's two, two ways of doing it. Okay. Um, and again, what, I'm, what I know now is that this side, so this cut line is, is correct. This is the old bird one. So I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to recreate my mirror line. So I'll just draw a line that goes from that point to that point. I'll find the middle as I've done previously. I'll pull that down. That'll give me my mirror point. And then what I'll do is I'll just delete um, this side. I'll click create mirror. And then I'll actually, I'll just get that top line because I don't want to mirror that top line really. Got that, create mirror. I'll click mirror line being center. Okay. And then I get back to where, where I was before, but what I know now is that these line, these actually line up with the model, so I'm not going to have that weird, weird jagged edge. So if I pull the body back in, I'm going to click on Finish Sketch, Modify, Split Body, and then I'm going to select that line to cut. In fact, I'll select both of them because you can, you can actually do the two cuts in one go. I'm going to click OK. Um, and then what you've got then is your middle body 
and your two outer pieces that you cut off. If you hide those two, that's where you actually get your um, your conk. And if you look at it, the, the edges are virtually correct. You'll see if you zoom in, sometimes it can be a fraction of a millimeter. In fact, if I measure the distance, just using the measure tool just to measure that distance, there's very, 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 very tiny differences between them. Um, but effectively, when you print it, you wouldn't see it. If you wanted to correct it, what you can do is sometimes if you highlight the face that isn't aligned with the other face and just hit the delete key, it will sometimes auto correct it or it'll sometimes delete part of the model, which it's doing there. So that's um, <clears throat> a little uh, kind of annoying thing that, uh, that Fusion does sometimes. There's different ways of of fixing it, you can just try to see. It's important there. Yeah, it's actually it's actually a whole one. So, so oh, there you go. Yeah, you, you can correct it, but but to be honest, when you when you start to model and print this, you, you you're not going to see it anyway because it's it's a, a hundredth of a millimeter out. Right. Not going to get too complex. Uh, I'll stop at that point. Um, any questions on that? Did did everybody follow most of it, or did we lose anybody at any point? Is there any so particular issue with the projection? Um, am I projecting from from? So when I pick geometry, am I choosing the geometry of what I'm projecting to, or what I'm projecting from? Um, you should be in the sketch. So if I yeah. If I go back in, you should be in the sketch that you want to project to. Yep. Um, so if I quickly go into sketch two, so sketch two, which is this outline, is where is the sketch that I want to bring the other sketch into. So I'm in that sketch. I click on uh, create project, and then the geometry. Uh, geometry. You can say it a lot better than I can, Christina. Why can't I say geometry? Geometry. Anyway, um, on that selection filter, th this is from the sketch that you want to project from. So this is from one. So if I click on that line or that line, for example, it will take it from that sketch one into sketch two. So do, I need to, do I need to go back and select that sketch first on my, um, in my, uh, my list on the side here? Or, cause I'm not, it's not highlighting the new lines. Um, you don't, you don't, so let's just get a step back. So you're in, you're in sketch two at the moment. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so you, 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 your cursor, if you're on a line or whatever, will snap to these points. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So, and can you see your sketch one so you can physically see it on the screen? Yes. Yeah. So I'll just hide it. So it tends to be the ones that haven't been projected are kind of faint. I don't know if you can see that on my screen. Mm -hmm. So you can see that. So you're, you're in sketch two um, and you want to take a point from sketch one. Create, project, include, project. And then it'll ask you to select geometry. You've got to have that left-hand side which says speci uh, specified entities, not the right-hand that says bodies highlighted. And then mm -hmm. you, should, you should be able to highlight any of the lines off that other sketch. It's not. It's not picking them up. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Are you, are you seeing it on my screen? Or what? I can see half of it on your screen, but I'm on my I'm on my iPad, so I'm, I think part of your screen is cut off for me. Okay. Um, I. Let's see. Yeah, it's not highlighting the second sketch. So it's not highlighting sketch one. I have sketch two selected. So you can draw in sketch two. You're, you're fully in sketch two. You've gone into project. And then when you select geometry, it doesn't let you select anything from that one. And your selection filter is on specified entities. Uh, hold on. It's, I can select them all. That's not right. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm in the right sketch.
Okay. Okay. Okay, I think I got it. Got it. Cool. Good. Um, any other questions? We all are we all roughly up to up to where we where we could be. I'm still. Uh, I'm sorry. I still don't understand how to cut the existing body body. Sorry, with the outline that we just draw on sketch two. Okay, Maureen, have you got? Um, have you got have you got an outline like that that shows? No, I only have lines. So, so I just hide. Am I just hiding my canvas? I've, uh, I've got an outline like that, but it's not a. It's not one uh, object. It's um, oh yeah, it's separate lines like you. It's separate lines like so. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then you've got these solid objects in front of it. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Just going to combine these together. Um, so what we're going to use is modify split body. Modify split body. Right. Oh yep. yeah. Okay. I see. Body, I see. Body now. Splits that one, and then the splitting tool. You just select those two lines, and it should just cut it like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. you. Hide, hide the two outlines. Okay. Cool. And then. What we've effectively done then is created the gonk, the basis of the gonk body. So what we'll do next time then is we'll start to um, model this even more to put some of the round edges on, put some of the details on. Uh, we can model the legs and the feet. So the, the aim is that we end up with something that we can 3D print um, that you know will just give us a static static model and we'll just step through that whole design process. Um, if you want to have a play with, um, you know, so, some of the modeling stuff that we do before we get on to the next one, I mean, that's quite useful just to sort of familiarize yourself. But that's the basics, really, of, uh, of starting to create bodies. Any questions? Michael, at what point do you, would you, so at this point, would you go ahead and delete bodies like four and five so that you pretty much don't need them anymore? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got them on there, but I, I, I tend to just hit. Delete, I'll hit delete. Um, and then I'm just left with that one particular body. As I said to you before, I, I tend to work in direct mod modeling mode so I can tidy up after myself. So I'll even start to delete sketches at once I don't need them. So that last sketch that we've done that does the cut, I don't need it anymore. So I just hit delete. That makes sense. Cool. Hey, oh, yep. Yeah. I, I was able to do my cuts, get everything lined up, and yeah. after I cut it, all of my faces are solid, one piece, except for the top of the gonk, which is in two separate pieces. Just Did you keep a mirror line, maybe? Oh, maybe it yeah, was you, the mirror line. Yeah, your mirror line just cut it. Okay. If you, if you, I mean, it's an easy one to fix. If you've got anything that's cut, um, you can just hit, uh, where is it? Modify, modify, combine, and that'll allow you to combine the two pieces together. Okay. This is the beauty of direct modeling because direct modeling, you can stick things together, you can cut things apart. You basically just think of it like wood, really, keep chopping and changing. Michael, this is really good. <laughs> if only I could get Fusion 360 working, and then uh, maybe, <laughs> next <time. laughs> maybe next time. I don't know. Has anyone ever had a problem where Fusion 360 opens, but the 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 work area is totally unresponsive, and you don't get any anything that you put there, but you can do stuff. But it, Does it, it say read only in the top left? Uh, no. Oh, well. It says personal, not for commercial use, but. Um, I mean, I can add objects, I can do sketches, but I can't see them, but I can see them in, in, in the sidebar. I think you okay. need to log on first. Did, I've um... rebooted twice. I've, I've, I've done some fixes on the Autodesk uh, um, uh, forum that I found, which seemed to be other people having similar issues. I've changed graphic card settings all whilst we were doing this. <laughs>
<laughs> None of it's worked. I had this before and I had to reinstall Fusion 360 before this session uh, because there was a, a library file issue and um, apparently the fix was to re reinstall. And I, now I realize I can't even remember how I fixed it last time, but um, yeah, 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 it was a good nuisance then. It makes you feel any better my whole computer crashed. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, I wouldn't, if my computer totally crashed, I wouldn't mind so much because I, you know, I could do something about this. I don't know how, I don't know how to do anything about it. It's frustrating as so. hell. But uh, yeah, I, I, no one's had any issues, and I don't know. When, when I first fired it up to do this session, I lost, um, I lost the origins in the middle. They just disappeared. Not the way, yep. not the why. First time it's ever happened to me. Um, and I couldn't see the workspace. I couldn't see some of the objects. It did really weird things. Um, and then I just came out for use and restarted it, and it was it was okay. But I don't know whether there's been a an update that's made it a bit wobbly at the moment. It's the first time it's happened to me. That. Yeah. It, Michael, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, okay, no, go ahead. It, you'll let us know when you post this on YouTube. Yes. Yeah, I will do. I'll, I'll 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 upload it now after we finish, so it should, should be upload pretty pretty quickly. Hopefully tonight, um, you can go through it again. Um, so all, all we're really doing is just this basic donk shape. We'll have a play with it. It's just you know the, the, a lot of the very basic stuff is is that design sketches and then doing that, um, and then what we'll do next time is we'll go through it and work a bit more. You know, we'll start adding some of the details and starting to add some of the shapes. But I reckon within three sessions we should be able to get. At least something that's printable and something that's that, that's modeled. So awesome. I have a question about the design history mode. So I've used on shape for a lot of CAD work, but I've never really used Fusion 360. Yeah. And one of the things I do in on shape a lot is, you know, say like we did the sketch for the cutting tool and then we did the split and broke it up into bodies. In on shape, you could then go back to the sketch, change the sketch and it would apply to the split that you had done. So like you can travel back in history, make modifications yep. to step two, and then the whole thing will redraw. Is that what the design history mode does? That, or? Yeah, that is, that's exactly it. So where, where I clicked on document setting and switched off the design history, if you leave that on, it's pretty much like that. Um, okay. What, what all I found is it is it, it, it responds quite in, in, in various ways that can confuse people when first getting started so with direct modeling it's a it's a bit more brutal and basic but all you're really doing is dealing with like lumps of wood effectively and chopping bits off um and you know i, I find it the quickest way of modeling I, I haven't actually used design history to any length i just found the damn thing frustrating when i tried to do it <laughs> but you're right brian that the um the, the advantage of that is you create beautiful blueprints and then what you can do is go down and move, move those blueprints around what I tend to do is, is fill holes and then recut holes and things like that. But, uh, I'd say the, his, the history can be pretty tough. Like in theory, it's great, but I've found, you know, I'll go back 10 steps, change something from five millimeters to seven millimeters. And then that introduces 12 geometry problems down the line. And then I have to go through layer by layer and pick out what I did wrong in those layers. And it's probably slower than just doing this, but in on shape, there's no way to turn that off. You just have to. Yeah. That's, that way. that's why I like direct modeling. It's, it's, it's really, I mean, you can imagine it, can't you? you designed a car and then suddenly you say, actually, I want the pumper to be four millimeters higher. And suddenly it knocks into about three different other parts of the car and it creates all mm -hmm. sorts of things. But, oh, it's mind blowing. They went complex. So I, I, I find the direct modeling quite a simple way of actually using Fusion. Yeah, I, I definitely liked this a lot. It's I've there have been times where I spent longer trying to fix some minor error than I did creating the model in the first place. And I just scrap it and start over because I can't figure out how to fix what I did. Yeah, yeah, and that's that, that's the speed and beauty of uh, the direct modeling. Really. Cool. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. As I said, I'll, uh, what I'll do also is the fusion. So the fusion file that I've created on here, I'll dump in the, in that same folder. So we've got the output in there as well. So if you want to have a look at um, this model that I've done and compare it to what you've done or whatever, I'll play around with it. You can do. Um, and then I'll post the YouTube clips up as well. And then I said, we're, I, I rec I'm reckoning about three sessions and we should be able to get the, the whole gaunt model. Much okay, guys. Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, that was great. All right. All right. Have a good day. Have, uh, have a lovely evening, and I'll catch you all soon. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. You too, mate. Cheers. Take care, everyone. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Thank you. Right, thank you. Bye. 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 Take care, everyone. Good to see you all.